Hi guys, and welcome to my first episode of Let's Roleplay Skyrim. So, if you watched the last video, you'll know we're just going to jump right on into it. So, let's go ahead and get started. And that's just the uh, potion you get with um, Skyrim. I do have Skyrim installed. I think I didn't mention that in the last video. Okay, guys. So here we are. As you can see, we are using the alternate start li uh, live, an live another life mod. I'm sorry about that. Got a little tongue-tied for a second. Um, but we are using that mod. Uh, because, of course, everyone has seen the intro, right? I mean, everyone's seen it. Everyone's seen it a million times. So, I mean, come on. What's really the point in going back through it again? Am I right? So, all right, guys. So, like I said, I was going to iterate some points from the last video into this video, uh, just because I think that they uh, can help with the roleplay. Um, so like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a slower Let's Play. Uh, some of the episodes may feel a tad travel loggy. Uh, basically some episodes where it doesn't feel like a whole bunch happens. I'm going to try to keep that to an absolute minimum. Um, but at the same time, I do want this to be kind of an interesting, kind of slower-paced roleplay. Now, um, for my character, I'm going to essentially be my character's subconscious. Um, I'm not going to be acting out my character. I'm essentially going to kind of be their little inner voice, their Jiminy Cricket, if you will. Um, their kind of little moral compass, their subconscious, uh, the little angel on their left and right shoulders, uh, basically. Um, and the reason why um, is because I am going to be uh, playing a character that I can't act out. Uh, if you watched the last video, you'll know because uh, basically I'm terrible at acting, but you also know because our character's gender is not going to be male. Um, it is going to be a female. So actually, let's just go ahead and change that right now. So we already know character is a female. Alright, so we already know she's going, it's going to be a woman. So, now the real question is, is who is our character? Who are they? Now, is our character a Nord? A strong-willed Nord woman, maybe making a return to Skyrim to make her fame and fortune? to basically stand with the men and earn a great place in the annals of history? Or maybe a female orc, someone who has been ostracized by the general population and is basically going to head out into the world, prove that she is someone far more and far better than anyone could have thought. Maybe a Redguard woman, you know, someone hailing from the shores of Hammerfell again come to make their come to make their fortune come to make you know become famous well it's not going to be any of those people maybe it'll be an imperial or maybe it'll even be a high elf an altmer right who would have thought an altmer maybe someone who threw off the throes of the old Mary dominion decided that this was a terrible terrible organization wanted nothing to do with it and basically is escaped to Skyrim to essentially try and live a life of peace. Well, it's not any of these people. We are going to be playing as a Dark Elf. Now, why am I playing as a Dark Elf? Um, a, because the Dark Elves actually happen to be one of my favorite races in all of more uh, not Morwen, but in all of Elder Scrolls. Um, in all of the Elder Scrolls, the Dark Elves are one of my absolute favorite races. Um, I just think they have a really interesting culture, a really interesting backstory to them. I just think they are so cool. Um, and quite frankly, I think they're actually... A, I know it's going to sound a little weird, but I feel they're a little more relatable um, than, quite frankly, the High Elves or even the Wood Elves, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that is who we're going to be. We're going to be a Dark Elf. Um, now, as you can see... Since I do have Sky reinstalled, I get all the little perks and all that kind of stuff, which I think is pretty cool. Um, now, luckily, you guys are not going to um, watch me sit here. Um, basically, um, 
going through a bunch of sliders because as you can see I do have the race menu installed as well um, and so yeah don't worry you guys aren't gonna sit here and watch me spend 20 minutes just going through slider after slider I actually already have a preset so I'm going to introduce you even though we're playing as a dark elf I'm going to introduce you to our dark elf and I'm rather proud of her here she is this my friends is going to be our dark elf character pretty nice looking huh I'm actually rather uh, I'm actually rather proud of her rather rather proud I think uh, she came up very very nicely I think she has a very nice dark elf look about her so well obviously because she is a dark elf but um, still I think she's rather interesting so I am going to go ahead and mess with a few sliders um, just because while I was play testing this I did find a few little um, things that I could change that I think I could just make a little bit better uh, but for the most part this is uh, going to be our character now who exactly is our dark elf character well what you guys need to know is that her name is Varessa her name is Varessa Underil, and uh, yes I understand some of you out there are probably saying you mean Indoril, right no I actually mean Underil. and the reason her last name is Underil is because it is indeed a grammatical corruption of the name Indoril that was actually made by her father so just give me a second while I just go and just change some of the sliders here because I do kind of want her to be a little bit of a wimpy-ish kind of uh, character in terms of her physique just, uh, let me just change that Ooh. alrighty so who exactly is Varessa? well to understand Varessa, you kind of have to understand her family, her backstory a little bit, um, to basically understand her as a character. So Varessa is not an elf from Morrowind. She actually hails from the city of Anvil, and she was born in the Imperial province, obviously, of Cyrodiil. Um, she's actually never stepped foot in Morrowind. She's never seen it. Um, aside from running into other um, Dunmer, quite frankly, who do originally hail from Morrowind, she really doesn't know a giant amount um, about Morrowind herself. Um, so she is kind of a dark elf who has lost her culture a little bit, but not entirely. Now, the reason she is from Anvil and not from Morrowind is because she is the daughter of a disgraced ordinator from the Inquisition sect of the Ordinators, and an Ashlander woman. And I think you guys can kind of already guess why um, she, uh, why she's the daughter of a disgraced Ordinator. Um, basically, long story short, when Red Mountain erupted, Varessa's mother, who was um, from the Ashlands, who was an Ashlander, managed to escape. She was a refugee, and she managed to make it to Mournhold where she met Varessa's father, who was in the Ordinators at the time, and like I said, was part of the Inquisition, uh, part of the Inquisition um, sect of the Ordinators. So basically, he was charged with basically running around and rooting out heresy. But he, but uh, her mother met him, and they started a bit of a love affair. Um, and this, of course, was greatly frowned upon by the other Ordinators uh, who found out about this. And basically, they kind of... Uh, told Varessa's father, look, you're basically in an illicit relationship with this Ashlander woman, you are part of the Ordinators, either you, you know, stop seeing this woman and get back to your duties, or we're going to kick you out. Basically disgrace you, kick you out, can no longer be part of the Ordinators. And, uh, excuse me, and, um, basically, uh, her father was like, fine, kick me out, I kind of don't care anymore. Um, and the reason why he really didn't care is because, uh, well, with the whole uh, Red Mountain erupting and the Nerevarine prophecy kind of coming to fruition and the fall of the tribunal, uh, quite frankly, Varessa's father grew pretty darn disillusioned with the temple and its teachings and uh, uh, kind of, uh, we would say, kind of turned into an atheist overnight. Um, now, even though uh, atheism probably doesn't really exist, in the, at least in the terms that we would think of it, um, I mean, basically, um, essentially, he, he was just like, you know, I'm, I've had enough. Um, he, he was pretty darn dissatisfied with his lot in the temple, and basically was like, you know what, I've had enough, I'm done with this place anyway. 
So with that, um, Varessa's mother and father go ahead and uh, they decide they're going to uh, leave Morrowind. Uh, they decide they're going to leave Morrowind and they settle in Cyrodiil and they settle in Anvil specifically. Um, essentially to get away from Morrowind, get away from the war, get away from all the devastation. Um, and then that is when Varessa here is born. And Varessa is born in the fourth era, 164. Um, so, I mean, if you guys are actually kind of keeping count and you know that um, Skyrim takes place in the fourth era, 201, uh, it actually means Varessa here is 37 years old. Um, and of course, Varessa's parents met when they were relatively young, but still they had Varessa kind of late. And uh, I know for some people out there, they're probably like, how does that even make sense? Um, but really, guys, it's because elves actually tend to have very long lives. Um, and even in the Elder Scrolls universe, the elves have pretty long lives. Um, if you guys have ever seen any of um, the Elder Scrolls lore by Shadycast, which I definitely suggest um, everyone check out, um, I think it's like Dark Elves live pretty long, like 300 years, I think, Dark Elves can live to. And I mean, even Altmer lived to like a thousand years or something like that. So the Elves in the Elder Scrolls universe live ridiculously long lives. So, um, so I mean, if you're actually kind of keeping count for Varessa here, um, she's, she's actually 37 years old. Um, now, I mean, even in our kind of modern day just kind of breaking the story here, but even in our modern day, I mean, 37 isn't, you know, very old at all. Um, but kind of in elf years, like, she's probably more like in her, considered to be more like in her early or mid-twenties at this point. Um, but anyway, getting back to the story, um, Varessa basically, um, helped out her father. Um, he managed to, um, open a nice little bookstore, um, so she's a pretty avid reader. She learned how to read and write from her father, um, her mother and father, of course, taught her about Morrowind culture, um, you know, taught her everything that they could about Morrowind, um, and like I said, essentially any Dark Elves that she ran into, she learned about Morrowind from them as well, um, but as I said, she's never seen Morrowind, she's never stepped foot in the place, um, she would like to go, she would like to see Morrowind one day, um, because she does feel a pretty deep connection to her own people, but... Uh, aside from that, though, she really doesn't understand the intricacies of Dunmer culture. Um, she just really doesn't know much about it. Um, so like I said, she's kind of a Dunmer who's kind of lost her, um, has kind of lost her, uh, culture in a way, and it's, it's a little sad. But hopefully we can remedy that with the playthrough, right? So, that's kind of where she is in terms of her, uh, kind of her own culture, um, and kind of her own understanding. She's, like I said, been raising the... Um, metropolitan, you know, empire where she's been around a ton of different people and races and stuff. Um, but aside from that, she really doesn't know all that much about her own people, kind of sad to say. Um, and of course, obviously, because she's been around a ton of different people, she has her own opinions about people, um, which you will see as we get to this Let's Play. Um, you will see, um, essentially, kind of what she feels and what she thinks about the different races and stuff and uh, I think it's gonna be interesting guys I think it'll be interesting to kind of see what she thinks and what she has to say about them so alrighty well anyway kind of continuing on with our story here though I understand it is getting a little long so I'll kind of try to keep it a little short um, but basically um, Varessa's uh, basically when the Brit well the Great War broke out um, Varessa's mother or Varessa's father I'm sorry sent Varessa and her mother up north um, to northern Cyrodiil, very close to the border of Skyrim, because um, Varessa's father, obviously being an ex-ordinator, um, knows how to fight, understands the military, um, and basically felt that, you know what, it would be far safer for them to be as far away from the fighting as absolutely possible. So um, this happens uh, when Varessa is still a child, um, but her and her mother, they are sent up north to basically the border of Skyrim and Cyrodiil, um, where they do find... Uh, where they do find refuge, and they are safe. Um, unfortunately, Varessa's father, though, is drafted into the ranks of the Imperial Legion to fight the war, um, to help both of the ranks, and unfortunately, he dies during the sack of the Imperial City. Um, he's actually was one of the legions. Um, if you read the, uh, the book about the Great War in the game, he's actually one of the legions that was left 
in the uh, Imperial City basically to make a last and desperate stand while the Emperor escaped. And he was in that Legion, so unfortunately he died during the battle. Um, and of course, this is devastating for Varessa and her mother. Now, after the war is over, um, Varessa and her mother return to Anvil, and they basically try to build a new life um, and get on with the business of living. Um, and things uh, kind of kind of go okay. Um, I mean, it's hard it's hard making ends meet. There are some nights where Varessa and her mother, even after working a long day, um, have to decide if they're going to buy food to eat or basically buy a room to sleep in. I mean, that's kind of how desperate their uh, that's kind of how desperate their situation gets sometimes. But for the most part, though, everything seems to be going okay. For the most part, everything seems to be all right. Life is hard, but hey, they have each other, and for Varessa and her mother, that's kind of, they kind of think that that's all they really need. Um, now, Varessa herself, of course, pitches in, helps her mom uh, by, you know, performing odd jobs and stuff. And during one of her odd jobs, she comes into the kind of uh, regular employ of an imperial mage by the name of Linus Atreus. Um, Linus Artreus kind of quickly befriends Varessa here, um, and, uh, Varessa and Artreus, um, they don't start, like, any kind of romantic relationship, but she would consider him to be a friend. One of the few people that, you know, she could kind of talk to and, uh, you know, really learns to trust Linus. And she introduces her to her mother, her mother seems to like Linus, um, so if anything, Linus is a pretty, uh, dependable family friend. Well, Linus is also a little bit of a wealthy um, imperial mage, and so he has a he uh, had a basically a nice little size estate in Coral, uh, basically just south of Coral, and he offers a job to Varessa and her mother, uh, basically kind of a room and board job. Basically, come live on my estate. I will pay you, um, you know help keep my house clean, help keep my affairs in order, do what I need you to do, and basically, you know, you can live on my estate, um, you know, I'll give you, you know, an allowance, some spending money and everything, and, you know, it's a facto kind of full-time employment for them. And so Varessa and her mother jump with a chance, they decide, you know, obviously this is going to be great for them, you know, this is, you know, exactly what they need. Um, and so they do. They go ahead, and they leave Anvil, and they uh, go ahead and move in with uh, Linus Artreus. And for the most part, everything is actually going pretty well. Um, Varessa really ends up helping Linus a lot with his research. Um, basically, he's not just a mage, he's also an alchemist. So she helps him in terms of uh, gathering ingredients and, uh, let's see what we got. yeah, like gathering ingredients um, and stuff like that. Um, her mother is basically responsible kind of more for the affairs of the household and everything. Um, but for the most part, everything is going pretty darn well. Um, Varessa even learned some alchemy from Linus. Um, and it really seems like life is starting to get better for Varessa and her mother. Um, they even started saving up enough to eventually kind of leave Linus's employment. And, uh, basically kind of hopefully purchase their own, uh, their own real house and you know maybe even kind of get the bookstore the dad had um you know back up and running and everything um i mean needless to say varessa and her mother they had plans they had plans and uh you know kind of looked like things were starting to work out for them um but all that really began to change because linus began to change he started getting um more and more um God, i'm actually just going to uh lighten up her hair a little bit so I can see everything a little more easily. Um, but he started to get more and more irritable and angry. Um, it kind of seemed like everything that Varessa and her mother were doing were never, were suddenly never really good enough for him anymore. And eventually, um, he started making more and more demands of them. For Varessa's mother, it was working longer hours, um, for Varessa's mother, she was really kind of in charge of keeping the house clean and everything, um, but still was working longer hours, um, you know, doing more and more housework, um, essentially kind of really working her mother to the bone. And for Varessa herself, um, it, 
her kind of, uh, she noticed that things were changing between her and Linus because Linus was sending her out deeper and deeper into the woods to gather out chemical ingredients and even sending her to places that were really generally dangerous. Um, and it really seemed like Linus just didn't care. Um, there were also other things that they, that Varessa and her mother started to notice as well. Like, for instance, Linus, um, never seemed to leave the house during the daytime, and if he did, he was always wearing a hood. Um, and even when he left the house during the daytime, he seemed to be really, really, really irritable about it. For whatever reason, just being outside in the daytime just did not seem to work with him or settle him anymore. Um, his eating habits started to change. Um, Varessa and her mother started to notice that he was eating food that was more and more raw, um, even sometimes to the point where it almost seemed to just be uncooked and bloody still. Um, and I mean, Varessa and her mother are not dumb people, obviously. Um, they started having their suspicions that Linus could very well be a vampire. Um, now, of course, they don't know if Linus was a vampire for a while, or if he had recently changed or something, but the kind of proof came in the pudding one night when Varessa managed to get back into Linus's workshop after she collected some ingredients for him, and she discovered some books on Molag Bowel and vampirism and just daydreamed princes in general. Um, and of course, when she told her mother about this, you know, they immediately made plans to basically try to escape, um, basically try to get off the estate um, and essentially flee. Um, they didn't really know where they were going to go, but they knew they couldn't stay with Linus because, you know, it was going to be far too dangerous to do so. So they began, and they started plotting in secret to leave Linus's estate in the dead of night, basically, and, uh, you know, get away from him. But then something happened one day. Um, Varessa here was told to go out into the woods, deep into the woods, and recover some certain alchemical ingredients. Um, nothing, quite frankly, that Varessa wasn't really used to by now in her station of being his kind of guinea pig slash assistant. But when she returned from her um, little excursion, she realized something. Her mother wasn't there. Her mother was missing. So she confronts Linus about it, asks him, hey, where's my mother? And he basically tells her that he sent her to town, basically to go and pick up some ingredients that she simply just hasn't returned yet. And uh, Varessa kind of already has a sick feeling in the pit of her stomach. She doesn't want to go ahead and confront Linus immediately, so she decides, you know, I will go ahead, I will wait, maybe, maybe Linus is telling the truth, right? Maybe my mother really is out there, and she really is, she really just hasn't gotten home yet. But, a couple, uh, but, of course, she doesn't return. And then, unfortunately, more and more days start to go by, and Varessa starts frantically looking for her mother. Because, obviously, she's not going to leave her mother behind, um, but she's getting more and more worried about her. And she's getting more and more worried about what has happened to her. And eventually, unfortunately, one day, she does find her mother. She finds her deep within the woods, actually not very far away from Coral itself. Um, but she does find her in the woods, and unfortunately, her throat has been essentially ripped open. She's drained of blood. Um, and some other unfortunate things seem to have happened to her. Her, t her clothes are torn. And it's just, it's a gruesome sight. I mean, it's absolutely just a terrible thing to witness. And Varessa already knows. She already knows what happened. She, she had this sick feeling in the pit of her stomach when she confronted Linus about it before. And this essentially just did nothing but confirm everything that she felt that she was experiencing over the last couple of days. And that was Linus essentially tracked her mother down and killed her in the woods and drank her blood and just did horrible unspeakable things to her and so Varessa obviously overcome by her grief decides that she's going to throw caution to the wind and she is going to confront Linus and try to kill him unfortunately for Varessa that plan goes horribly wrong she does confront Linus but she confronts him with a normal uh, dagger, a normal iron dagger, a dagger that he actually gave her uh, to essentially fend off the local wildlife and not much more. She tries to confront him with this dagger, tries to kill him, and obviously 
It doesn't go very well. And Varessa herself almost dies trying to kill Linus. Now, luckily, she manages to escape. She manages to escape, and she runs into the woods. And as she runs into the woods, she decides she's going to head for... Uh, she decides she's going to head back to Anvil. So that's what she does. She heads back... To, she heads back to Anvil. Sorry, guys. Um, she heads back to Anvil. And she is, you know, gravely wounded... Um, has really nasty, nasty wounds. Luckily for her, she doesn't turn into a vampire. She's not infected with vampiric blood at all. But, I mean, Linus really did end up doing a number on her pretty harshly, so... But nonetheless, she manages to make it back to Anvil. And she is taken care of by the Temple Healers. And uh, luckily, the temple, healers, the temple Healers believe her story about Linus being a vampire, so they keep her hidden in case Linus does try to come after Varessa, um, but Linus never does. So Varessa basically spends the next couple of weeks in this uh, temple chapel in Anvil, um, getting better, um, healing up, and after she does heal up, she decides that there's nothing left for her here in Anvil. There's nothing left for her in Cyrodiil. I mean, on one hand, she knows of a terrible vampire who, for all she really knows, will come after her eventually, will try to kill her. Um, but on the other hand, she feels terrible because she feels like she put her own mother in this situation. She basically tells herself that if she hadn't gotten close to this Linus person, if she hadn't gotten to know him, um, that she basically feels her and her mother would still be alive, probably still struggling, but they would still be alive. Um, and so for Varessa, she just can't, she just can't deal with that grief. She can't deal with that guilt, and she decides that she needs to leave Anvil. She needs to leave Cyrodiil in general, and basically go and try to start another life. So with that, she gathers what coin she can, gathers all the septum she could possibly, you know, get her hands on, everything that she managed to escape with, um, sells off basically anything she found in the woods while she was, you know, heading to Anvil, basically. Um, she sells it all, and she gets just enough money to board her passage on a ship. And she boards that ship. She doesn't know where it's going. Quite frankly, she doesn't care where it's going. She simply wants to leave Anvil. She wants to leave Cyrodiil, and she wants to start a brand new life. A brand new life far away from basically all the horrors that has happened over the past couple of weeks. And uh, that is essentially where our character is. So now I'll go ahead and name her Varessa. Alright guys, as you can see, we have everything here. All of our mods are initiating. Uh, it's the wet and cold holidays. Let's do that. Uh, that's kind of odd. But here we are, guys. So here is our character, Varessa. We don't know where she's going, but we do know where she's been. And Varessa, for all intents and purposes, is here in this cell. Now, when she boarded the skinny horker, she remembered that she got to her cabin um, and fell asleep. And she thinks that obviously this must be her dream. Um, obviously this has to be a dream. Has to be some weird kind of nightmare she's having. Uh, let's see if we can try to get out. Nobody responds to my pounding on the door. So obviously Varessa feels like this has got to be some kind of nightmare. So she's got to try to get out of here. And then she notices the statue of Mara. Now, uh, we won't get into Varessa's kind of religious beliefs at the moment right now, but we will later on. But, hmm, don't really know what the statue of Mara is doing here. But... We'll go up to it and maybe see if we can do something with it. Approach, my child, and choose where your new life shall begin. Oh. Well, let's see. 
was on the skinny horker. And then I remember that sometime in the middle of the night, the ship itself began to rock back and forth pretty violently. Hmm. But I was on the skinny horker. The last thing I think Varessa remembers is water rising. Cold, frigid water rising. And people kind of screaming frantically. So, yeah. I think she believes the ship was going down. So, as kind of terrifying as it is for her to say, she thinks that, my goodness, it's possible that she was shipwrecked. Even in our darkest hour, there is yet hope. Well, I certain... Well, Varessa certainly hopes you are right, Lady Mara. Alright, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this first episode here. But when I do come back, we will hopefully go ahead and have this other life started. I'm going to uh, essentially try to take this time to configure my mods and everything. But hopefully the next time that I get this video started, we are going to be neck deep in super cold water. So until next time, guys, me and Varessa will see you around. Hope you enjoyed this first episode, and hope you'll enjoy it, and uh, you'll enjoy the next one as we uh, get ready to explore the land of Skyrim for our first ever Let's Play. All right, guys, see you around.